My guys, today the second part of my guide to watercolor paints. In the first part we spoke about watercolor general characteristics, format, sizes. But today we are going to talk about composition in more detail, label symbols and terminology. So without further ado, let's get started! In the previous video I spoke about watercolor composition and I said that watercolor paint are composed by pigments, binders and additives. What are these components? Additives are various substances added to improve the paint's handling performance and longevity. Common additives include glycerin, honey, preservatives and many others. These additives can be included in the paint by manufacturers or mixed in by artists to achieve desired effect and handling properties. Binders are a substance that holds the pigment particles together and helps them to adhere to painting surface. The most common binder in watercolor paint is gamma arabic, which dissolves in water and dries to a clear, glossy film. And what about pigment? Is the color component of the paint, which provides the hue and the opacity. Pigments can be natural or synthetic and are chosen for their light fastness, vibrancy and stability. Speaking of pigment, you can see on the watercolor paints label some code name starting with letter P, like for example in the white color the PW6. And that is the code for the pigment that is used to create that color. A color can contain a single pigment or can contain a mix of different pigments. And that is a very important thing because usually the colors with a single pigment mix better with other color without resulting dull and muddy while the colors that are already formed by three pigments usually mixed with other color can give you a muddy effect. And also with the pigment code you can know which pigment composes the color and how precious it is. For example, the pigment's cost can vary a lot by the purity of the pigment and how precious that pigment is. By looking the watercolor paint label, we notice that uh, usually we can find a square or a circle and it can be empty, half empty or full. That circle or square refers to the transparency of the color, so indicates how much light passes through the paint, affecting its appearance when layered. An empty square or circle means that the color is transparent, while an half-filled square or circle means that the color is semi-transparent or semi-opaque, and the filled square or circle means that the color is opaque. Another specific that we can find on the label is uh, usually a series of numbers of letter and that is usually the number or letter code that identify that specific color. For example, here I'm showing how the Rosa Gallery put a number to indicate lavender color, while Albain use a letter plus numbers to identify each color. Other symbols that we can find on paints are stars and plus symbols, and they indicate light fastness. In particular, light fastness indicates how resistant the paint is to fading when exposed to light. There is a standardized scale that it is called ASTM rating, in which Roman number 1 indicates an excellent light fastness, a Roman number 2 indicates a very good light fastness, while a 3 Roman number indicates a fair light fastness. And in this case, the 3 is not recommended for artwork intended to last. 
while with stars and plus signs actually the highest the number of stars or plus more light fastness as the color so three stars or plus indicate excellent light fastness two very good light fastness and one moderate to low light fastness Another important information that you will find on paint is the watercolor series and that refers to a system used by paint manufacturers to group their watercolor paints based on various criteria, typically related to the cost and the quality of the pigments that they used. Usually you can find the series number one or the letter A and these usually indicate the least expensive category and includes common widely available pigments. The series two or B includes pigment that are slightly more expensive than those in series one or A. Series three or C indicate paint that are more expensive due to the use of higher quality pigments and they are less common or harder to produce. And in the end, the series 4 or D indicate the most expensive paints and include rare, natural or extremely high quality pigments. Another very important information that you can find on your watercolor paint is the toxicity. In particular here I'm showing an old bane color that has these symbols, an X, that indicate that this color is toxic. Watercolor toxicity refers to the potential harmful effect that watercolor paints and their components can have on human health and environment. While many watercolor paints are considered safe for general use, some pigments and additives can be toxic if ingested, inhaled, or absorbed through the skin. When you use this kind of paint, you have to take additional safety measures. For example, using gloves, wash very well the hands after using the color, avoid eating or drinking, and you have to work in a good ventilated place or wearing a mask to use the paint. This topic actually is very interesting, so let me know if you want a video completely dedicated to this topic. Other than these most common and diffused symbols, actually you can find a lot of other symbols that are different from different manufacturers. As an example, here I have the Rosa Gallery color sheet and here you can see how the color with granulation are indicated with a G and with the letter N instead are indicated the color that contains pigment that derives just from natural mineral. But for many different brands, you can find many different symbols. For example, the P on the front of Daniel Smith tubes indicates the Primatex series that I also review here on my channel. But you can find also additional information like the staining property of the color. So if a color actually stain after that it dries or if it is easy to lift, or you can find information about the permanence of a color that refers to durability and longevity of the paint under normal condition that is different from light fastness and usually they are indicated with letters with the double A being extremely permanent to the C that indicate fugitive color or as we say like with G usually is indicate the granulation of a color that indicates whether the pigment particles clump together creating a textured effect and in many cases NG means non-granulating color. So all these symbols can differ through the different manufacturers out there. So it is a very good practice. Always do your research and see what actually the specific symbols means. But more in general, we can say that uh, the generic symbols that we see in the previous part of the video, they are widely used and usually they are the standard among all the manufacturers. And that's it guys. That was all for the second part of the complete guide of watercolor paints. 
I really hope actually these two videos can be useful especially for beginners that want to start it out but don't know anything about uh, terminology, symbols, uh, formats, sizes. Uh, I really hope that I give you some information that will be useful for your watercolor paints choice. Please let me know in a comment below if I miss something or if you want a specific video dedicated to some topics that we touch in these two videos. I really hope you enjoyed the video, if so please give us a thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe to don't miss any other content. See you next time, moi moi!